Throughout the Cold War, the West discovered, through direct evidence such as defectors or intelligence collection, that the Soviet Union and its satellite were engaging in large-scale espionage against NATO. Spying against NATO did not necessarily only occur at NATO itself, but also in NATO countries and delegations. For instances, in the late 70s and throughout the 80s, NATO counterintelligence officers, working with their allied partners, caught five serious hostile agents from a range of countries. As NATO's military command structure and civilian international staff were based in France until 1967, this is where some of the first famous and most publicized espionage cases came to light. The first concrete exposed NATO espionage case happened in the early 1960s and involved a NATO international staff member by the name of Georges Pack, who was at the time deputy head of the NATO press office. Pack had been spying on behalf of the Soviet KGB against France as a senior French civil servant in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s, and then against NATO as an IS staff member for a few years before being uncovered and arrested in 1963. He was at the time sentenced to life imprisonment but was freed on probation in 1970. At that time, the Soviets were also using what we called their Soviet bloc allied countries, and in the early 60s, they were successful in using one of the most active and successful intelligence officers, who was subsequently able to recruit quite a number of NATO staff, including in one specific instance, a translator in the document center at the NATO HQ in Paris. Even though the NATO staff was eventually caught and sent to prison, the intelligence officer escaped imprisonment by returning home when the espionage case was uncovered. The espionage activities continued when NATO headquarters was relocated in 1967 to Brussels. The East German Ministry of State Security, better known as the Stasi, were very active and recruited a number of NATO secretarial support staff. This was an extremely clever program, targeting young, single, lonely and bored women who nevertheless had crucial access to intelligence, thanks mainly to their bosses. Normally, a straightforward approach, using a blend of flattery and a hint of excitement, worked. Two of the most damaging agents defected to East Germany before being uncovered in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Perhaps the most damaging Cold War agent targeting NATO was a man codenamed Topaz, who worked with, this, with his wife in the NATO civilian international staff from the late 70s until the early 1990s. Topaz fortunately was uncovered in 1993 after a very long counterintelligence investigation in the wake of German reunification. He was a Stasi asset who had been passing classified NATO information for over 16 years while employed at NATO within the Directorate of Economic uh, Affairs. He was eventually sentenced to a 12-year jail term in Germany on espionage charges in 1994, but was freed in 2000. Mm -hmm.